Bright Hour Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. This is the first official episode of the Right Hour Podcast. Hooray! Yay! And if it sounds like we are coming to you from a cave, it's because we are in a very, very empty office. We hope you all have taken a moment to listen to our teaser episode. If you haven't, go ahead and put a pause on this and head over and listen to that first. It's a great little taste of what we have in store for you. So last time, by accident, we created uh, two restaurant episodes. Yes. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. Um, what do the plays today have in common? Today, the plays have a really great look at interpersonal relationships. How we react with our partners, how we react with our... Pot- no, no, that's all a lie. No, Mainly just the a- one. <laughs> just no, the one. True. No, no, there's one of them that is... Um, they don't have anything in common, and that is what makes this podcast really exciting. Because yeah. we are doing a variety of things. We don't need to stick to a theme, to a topic. We are letting the writers write what speaks to them. Yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, so... So uh, the goal of this podcast is to give new and emerging writers an opportunity to have their work produced. Right. In the previous episode, we sort of showcased what this um, podcast is about, which is um, fun pieces by new writers um, created in uh, interesting sonic environments. And this week, we are going to continue that trend with four new pieces which are... Our first piece today is A Day with Destiny by Ken Proofs. Um, and this is a piece that starts um, and occurs in the middle of a busy street like this one. Excuse me. I don't mean to bug you, but do I know you from somewhere? Oh, look, I really don't have time to... Actually, you do look familiar. <laughs> Good. I thought it might be weird that I stopped you. Oh, it is weird, but if you had if you followed me, that would have been creepy. I'm not creepy, I promise. <laughs> I'm Dave. Destiny. I don't think I know a Dave. I... But we've met before, haven't we? It feels like it. We've probably just seen each other around town. Oh, I'm rarely in this part of the city. You ever get out to West End? Only when I see my doctor. You think we see the same one? Not unless yours is a gynecologist. <laughs> Maybe we have mutual friends. We can check Facebook. Yeah, Facebook's for old people. Instagram? Mm, Instagram's for high schoolers. You on a dating site? Dinder, Bumble and OkCupid, okay you? <clears throat> just, uh, just J-Date. Well, that rules out church. Sit down, we're figuring this out. Maybe we knew each other as kids. Where were you born? St Ives. Me too. Uh, Cambridge? Cornwall. Secondary school? Home school. University? Ah, didn't go. Didn't think. Ah, uh, have you bought music from me over at Scratchy and Skippy's used records? I'm allergic to vinyl. I slice bacon at Dr Cleaver's Pork Ham Porium. Ever eat there? I'm a vegetarian, a Peter member and loving mother of three pot-bellied pigs. I'll take that as a no. Wait, have, have we ever... What? <laughs> of course not. I think I'd remember that. Good, because I probably wouldn't. <laughs> Too many fuzzy nights hopped up on Pop Rocks and Red Bull, if you know what I mean. I honestly have no idea. We have seen each other before today, though. I know that. An art show, farmer's market, pottery class. Hooker bar, strip club, prison. Wait a second. No, that can't be it. Go on, uh, give it a shot. I'm, I'm not budging till we get this. Well, when I was 16, I had a dream. Is this the part where you finally get creepy? It was like no dream I've ever had before or since. Vivid and lifelike, yet magical and surreal. Well, I've had a few like that myself. Probably the Pop Rocks and Red Bull. <laughs> I was alone on an ice-covered mountaintop, freezing to death in a swirling blizzard. I had enough energy to make one desperate plea to be saved, but instead of calling for help, I shouted, I love you, and heard my voice echo 
into the chasm. I love you, I love you, I love you. And then you heard something. A woman's voice. Echoing back. Echoing, echoing. As if saving you with a response. I love you, I love you, I love you. Could we have had the same dream? Suddenly, in one glorious instant, the storm vanished, the sun rose, and the ice melted into a crystal blue river which ran through the wildflowers and cascaded from the crest in a spectacular waterfall. Then, in the distance, across a vast canyon, I saw the figure of a woman. Of a man. And unable to be heard over the raging waters. And what sounded like a chorus of angels. I raised my hands, and with no training in sign language whatsoever, I gestured. We gestured. Some day. It was you. It was you. The man from my dreams. My destiny. Oh, thank God we figured that out. It was going to drive me nuts all day. Well, I've got to run. Am I seeing you again, Dave? Oh. Bye then. That was A Day of With Destiny by Ken Proust, directed by Anisha Srinivasan, featuring William Jarvis as Dave and Hannah Lawrence as Destiny. Um, uh, yeah, I uh, really enjoyed making that piece because it gets very serious while being very absurd. Um, and that is um, something that I try to express in the music. And I think you did a great job. How do you know? <laughs> um, it's because I really like... Um, I really like sort of melodrama music that suddenly stops. Yeah, the build. I think it has a, it's a piece that has a really great build and then this fantastic little deflating moment <laughs> that just leaves you with the sort of bemused smile, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's next? Uh, next we have A Boat on the River by Laura Ketnich. Corey. Uh, yes, we do. And it starts with a musical cascade. That's not what I said. If I think you're lazy, I'll tell you to your face. I only nudged you. With your heel. It's very... It's very quiet. No birds? No wind. Not a ripple. It's not like you made any promises. Maybe not to you. I knew him just as well as you did. He was simply incapable of... Sometimes I think we didn't know him at all. Why did we push him? When we knew... We should have known... Did you hear that? This boat steers like a dream. <laughs> when did you ever row a boat? It's because there's no current, see? What? No current? You hate the water? When I was 16, Nick Shepherd took me on a boat. You always say it ruins your hair. We didn't do much rowing. Yeah, but... The sweet pain of first love. What about old, uh, what's his name? I was never in love with him. He had those horrible wet lips. <laughs> I gave Andy Richardson a lock on my hair once. He didn't ask for it, mind you. He never did have much luck. Mm, good old Harry always stood by me. He was a good guy. Why did I have to ruin it? Love is strange. The things men have done to win me over. Ugh. Was it love? Don't ask me how you feel. I can still see his face. His hands. They were so... I can't, oh. I can't bear it. Limp. Like dead spiders. And to think what those hands had been. How could we? Sarah. Yes. How did we? I, I don't know. I can't remember how it... It was all so chaotic. confusing. There's nothing here. No trees. No land. Not another living soul. Ah! What is it? Oh, I don't know. 
Is it a bite? No. Oh, I hate midges. It's not a bite. I only... <sighs> only last week he swore to me. He'd never felt this way about anyone else before. Mm. Not even his ex-wife. Mm. Bastard. I can't believe we were so... How could we let a man get between us? After all this time. All this time. Teal drapes. What? Horrid teal drapes. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. A, a small room, but no, not our house. I would never use teal. Was it a hotel? Yes, I booked it under his ex-wife's name. Naughty. We left the lights off. I closed the drapes. It was raining outside. We were really coming down, do you remember? Teal should never be used for soft furnishings. And then we put a chair in the... Dimmed. Co- they were dimmed. I don't see well in the dark. We told him to sit down. In that chair. The chair. And then... Ah! Mm. Sod it. Keep rowing, Kate. Who put you in charge? It's not a... I don't even know what... Can you hear that? What? A thousand miles, dear. I can't hear anything. Why are you singing? Darling, just hold my hand. What is it, hun? I used to sing it over the phone. Be my girl, I'll be your man. I don't think about that now. Ow! You know! I think it happens whenever we stop rowing. What does? That, that, the thing. What thing? The bite, the, the sting on your neck. You, you, scre- you screamed out just now. Oh, that. Honestly, Kate. Feels like a whip to me. What have you ever been whipped? <laughs> you don't want to know the answer to that. Who's doing it then? Doing what? The whipping. It was usually Kyle, but sometimes I had to. No, I mean here. Who would be doing that? Oh, I don't know. I think I can hear it now. The whip? No, the music. Why would you be hearing my song? It's not your song. Mm-hmm. I know that one. If you fall, I will catch you. I'll be waiting. Cindy Lauper. Yes, I remember. It was a beautiful ceremony. At least she felt no pain at the end. Ah! Is it just me? In here. It's like standing by a roaring fire. But there's no fire. Ah! What is it? Blood! Where? Water. Don't look. He deserved it. It just got out of hand. It's right, did I? What were you thinking? I brought an unsliced loaf. It was the first thing on the bench. It's so messy. My idea worked better. It was very. <laughs> I didn't think you'd... Neither did I. Does that make us... Don't say it! This is like that time you dared me to get off at Battersea. It, it's nothing like that. We got off the bus and we had no idea where we were. I didn't think you'd actually do it. I didn't get home till after nine. I missed supper. What a thrill. <laughs> Dad was furious. Isn't it? What? Never mind. It's nothing like that time. For one thing, this is not a bus, and another thing. Fine, it's nothing like it. I've never seen so much blood in my life. It got all over my. What? Where's it gone? It's all your fault. What? It was your idea. You organised it. Never in my life. You Have think you I can act or ever? I know what you're capable of. Anyone as much as I because I hated I'm him. The pretty one. Oh, I thought you, you thought. I'm sorry. You know what, Kate? In the end, the more you have, the more you have to lose. What? Nothing. We both have a lot to lose, just in different ways. Had. We better keep rowing.
Can you hear that? What's that up ahead? I can't see far enough. We're on a tributary. You always had good eyes. Oh, God, I think I understand. Remember when you spotted that deer in the forest and no one believed you? It's the sticks. And then we all saw it. The acaron. It had white spots on its chest and we all had to look so hard to see it. The lethe, of, of course. What are you on about, Eagle Eyes? I, I have a drink from the river. Is it safe? It makes you forget. Here we are. Up ahead, it's the gates. What? I, I, I can see it. it the dog's out, Sarah. Okay, you put the kettle on. Sarah? Yes, son? Where are we? Oh, I can't remember. I rode a boat once. <laughs> you did not. I was 16 years old. But you hate the water! So that was A Boat on the River by Laura Katnich Corey, directed by Anisha Srinivasan, featuring Jessica O'Toole as Kate and Hannah Lawrence as Sarah. And I, when I first read that piece, um, I thought, I've definitely read this before. I think there's a massive myth about two sisters who go swimming on the river Styx. There is no such myth. I don't know such myth. If you know such myth, please email us and let me know because I still haven't figured out what it is. You know, when I was reading plays, this was the first play that I put on the yes pile. Yes. Yep. Uh, I read it and I just thought, I just loved the way that it developed and the eeriness of it. I thought it was really captivating and I thought this would be a really fun thing to put on the podcast. I also like um, the way in which it plays a lot with spaces in sound. Yeah. And a lot with um, sort of vague objects. So I really enjoyed putting it together. Now we have um, our, basically our feature presentation, um, which is A Breakaway by Andrew Turner. And as you can hear, the main characters are right behind the door approaching as we speak. Oh, 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 oh. Bloody foot on the, the thing. We'll put the light on for heaven's sake. I'm looking sake. for it. <sighs> Well, it's... Um... We'll only be sleeping here, won't we? Most of the time we'll be out exploring. Bathroom's all right. <sighs> oh, this is far too soft. I'll never sleep on it. I'll swap. I don't It'll be mind. fine. Or we could, could push them together if you like. This holiday's for my birthday, Stephen, not yours. Congratulations. Next door's just woken up the entire floor. I hope they're not going to keep this up all night. Just having a bit of fun, Helen. Remember what that is? It's almost midnight. They should be more considerate. Oh, she's got a very vulgar laugh. She's enjoying herself. Yeah, that type of woman always is. Usually with someone else's husband. I saw her the other day, you know. Saw who? You know full well who. <coughs> oh, did you? She's put on weight. Has she? Mmm, round the hips. No, still dresses the same, though. Elaine. Cheap little name for a cheap little woman. I finished. She was pushing a pram. Was she? Mmm. Little baby. Must have been more than five months. Might be yours. Don't be bloody stupid. Well, work it out. Five months old plus nine months. That means she got caught about July of last year. And when did I find those texts? I don't know. August 17th, 12.18pm. You left your phone in the conservatory. It was bleeping because it wasn't charged. Do you remember? I remember. I'm sure you do. Why are we going anyway, over this again? I'm just making conversation. You're not going to unpack? Well, no one else will do it, will they? <sighs> but anyway, I was joking. What about? Baby. Well, a baby at her age? Come on, Stephen, use your brain. She was with a man, if you must know. I told you. Couldn't care less. Some other poor cow's husband, no doubt. Was 
wasn't funny. What wasn't? Your little joke. No, well, neither was finding out your husband was sleeping with the town scrubber. But you get over it. What the hell was that? Headboard, most probably. Oh, don't be smutty. It's a weeknight. Why don't you pop round and remind them then? Can't have sex, it's not the weekend. I'm not saying that. I just don't want to be listening to that all night. You know what they say, if you can't be, um, oh, can join you just... um... Please! We've been in the room all of 15 minutes and all you've talked about is sex, sex, sex. Why are you whispering? Because some of us have consideration for our neighbours. Oh, make up your mind, Stephen. One minute I'm too quiet, the next I'm too loud. Does every conversation we have after descending to childish bickering? You started. I it. did not. Oh, now it's been childish. Oh, shut up. Don't you tell me to shut up. The cheeky of all the out. You were shouting. Oh, that's just typical of you, isn't it? Every time some thug abuses me through a wall, you always say it's my fault. So, she's overdoing it a bit, don't you think? I don't know. I don't understand the need for all this vocalisation, moaning and groaning like some wounded animal. I blame Meg Ryan. Oh, it's just her way of telling him he's doing a good job. We'll send him a thank you card. It's quieter. People never used to do all this carry-on. How do you know? I grew up in a terrace, that's how. Oh, I can't listen to her much longer. Well, why don't we go out then? They'll probably be asleep by the time we get back. Oh, where are we going to go this time? Everywhere will be shut. We could find a bar somewhere. I'll spend the evening with a bunch of drunken cockneys on a stag do, I don't think. Well, we could get room service. It says here they'll serve till one in the morning. If we order now... Oh, no. It'll be all that foreign muck. You know I have irritable bowel. Do you want me to spend the week chained to the toilet? Do salad. Well, I bet it isn't washed and they'll put olives on it. They put olives on everything. Do they not do anything normal? Like a nice sandwich? Yeah, have a look. It's a bit, uh, a bit... Hmm? <clears throat> and the, uh... <clears throat> Sorry, very dry in it. All of a sudden. Huh? Hmm. <clears throat> I wonder what they call a man who gets his kicks listening to other people have sex. Married. Oh, uh, what? Pervert. Eh? Well, thank God that's over. Now we can all get some... Oh, she's up shit creek now. Shh, I'm trying to listen. Oh, who's the pervert now? Shh. Listen to her, slut. Oh, it's a bit harsh. Oh, is it? She can't even remember the name of the man she's sleeping with. If that isn't the sign of a tart, then I don't know what is. She might just be forgetful. Oh, listen to her. I don't know in Adam. I don't know in Adam. She must think he was born yesterday. She might have made a genuine mistake. It does happen, you know. What are you talking about? She might actually not know an Adam. Women like that always know an Adam and a Tony, Phil, Derek, Orlando. Ah, oh, don't tell me he's buying that excuse. Why? What is her excuse? I don't know. A grubby little horse talking too quietly. But what possible excuse could she have? Maybe she's just lonely and <sighs> stupid. Someone came along who ordinarily she wouldn't touch with a barge pole. But because of... Well, because things weren't going well at home, she was vulnerable to anyone who'd show a bit of affection. And maybe, maybe, she's really sorry. I'm really sorry. What were you wittering on about? Oh, it doesn't matter. I do wish people would learn to enunciate. Can't make out a word they're saying. So inconsiderate. Well, it's a change for us, listening to someone else argue. Mm. We never used to argue this much, did we? Well, we used to get on quite well, if you remember. I think we used to like each other once upon a time. Oh, no, you are going back a bit. Mm. Well, are you going to order something to eat, or am I just going to sit here and starve? <coughs> hello? Oh, um, uh, hello, this is uh, Mr Quigley in room... Uh, hold on, uh, what's 23 in... 23. Oh, we... Uh, 23. Uh, I see, garçon. We, uh, nos would prefer a un or dues, a, a dues sandwich, eight, civil play. Oh, that's French, you fool. Sorry? Uh, pardon? 
It's been much friggin' easy if these people learn to speak English. Oh, oh sorry, you do speak English. Fantastic, eh? Uh, right then, we'd like two sandwiches, please. Hold on, I'll ask. It's gone very quiet in there, you know. What filling do you want? Oh, nothing foreign. Something plain, bland, tasteless, you know, British. Two tuna sandwiches, please. Nothing on them. Gracias, amigo. Anything happening? I can't hear them. Maybe they... What's he saying? Something about it not being the first time. <gasps> Dirty cow's done it before. Oh, I've met her type. Nick is up and down so often she's got them on hydraulics. What's she doing? Oh, typical scarlet woman. She's turned on the waterworks. It's a bit bloody late for that, love. Do you think she's all right? He sounds really mad. Betrayal would do that to you. No, no, but I mean really like crazy mad. He's every right to be. That poor man takes his wife away for a romantic weekend and what does he find? She's sleeping with Arthur County. You don't know they're married. They might be lovers on a dirty weekend. Oh, have you ever heard unmarried people argue like that? Listen to them. If he was more whiny and she was more shrill, they could be us. Oh, poor Marcus. Who the hell's Marcus? He's Marcus. Him next door. How do you know his name? Well, I... I don't. But he sounds like a Marcus. 43. No, 42. Tall. Toned. Muscular, short, dark hair, graying at the sides. And he works in advertising. No, marketing. You don't even know what that is. And neither does his wife. And do you know why that is, Stephen? Because he leaves his work at the office. When he comes home, he wants to talk about proper things, important things. Like? Art, culture, music. He's a psycho. Listen to him. Poor man. What about her? Who? Joyce. Joyce? Yeah, Joyce. Imagine having to live with a brute like that. Marcus is not a brute. He's warm, gentle. He likes listening to Celine Dion reading poetry and watching French cinema. Marcus sounds a bit gay. He's not gay. He's sensitive. Affectionate. You never let me be affectionate. Oh, that's not affection, that's sex. Marcus knows how a woman likes to be treated, to be seduced, to be wooed. Oh, well, if Marcus is so bloody perfect, why is his wife screwing somebody else? Because she doesn't know when she's got it good. Got it good? Stuck in a marriage with some boring, limp-wristed pansy who always wants to talk about how he feels? Poor cow. Wanted some excitement. She wanted a bit of passion, a bit of lust, without having a two-hour lecture about sharing and emotions. In a word, she wanted, not, she wanted a right word. good shagging. Ah, oh, you're so vulgar. It's not vulgar, Helen, it's just sex. That's what it's always about with you two. Who two? You and Joyce. It's because we're normal. <gasps> so Marx and I aren't normal, are we not? Why? Because we believe in the sanctity of marriage. Because we don't go rutting in alleyways like stray dogs. You know, as hard as it may be for you to believe, Marcus loves that woman. He respects her. Not that she deserves him. It doesn't have anything to do with love, you silly bitch. She still loves Marcus, anyone can see that. But you know what they say, if she isn't getting it at home, she'll go elsewhere. Oh, she'll go anywhere, from what I can tell, with anyone. She's only had one affair, for Christ's sake. Uh, that I know about. Oh, how many times me and Elaine was a one-off. going to turn the light off. It's not like I haven't seen it before, Ellen. I want to switch the light off. I just want to run through our itinerary for tomorrow. <sighs> what time do we have to be up? They serve breakfast from 7.30. That's so too early for eight. the first day. It'll have to be nine at the earliest. Fine. Just have to miss out on the cathedral then. Seen one, seen them all. Are you going to be long because I can't sleep Fine. with that? Fine. Son of a bitch! Oh, I'm fine, by the way. Mm. Oh, why don't you make a bit more noise, Steve? I think there's an old deaf couple on the seventh floor still asleep. Well, I'm sorry, but I have... Right. Good night. How long is this going to carry on for? God knows. Let's just hope they... Not them. It's talking about us. Or are you just going to keep punishing me forever? I told you it would take time. It's been eight months. I know how long it's been, Stephen. I know exactly how long it's been. To the day... I've done everything you asked. Huh. You want me to be grateful for that? No, I just... I don't know. I just don't know how much longer I can put up with. Put up with? What, Stephen? Huh. And what exactly have you had to put up with, huh? The neighbours laughing at you behind your back. Your own mother telling you you failed as a wife... 
Is that what you've had to put up with? You didn't. You haven't failed as a wife. It's nothing to do with you. What? what I mean is, I don't want you to take it personally. She was a 48-year-old school dinner lady, for Christ's sake. How can I not take it personally? Well, I... I mean, I can understand it if she was some 20-year-old necrophiliac with boobs out here, but her... I think you mean nymphomaniac. What did I say? Necrophiliac. What's a necrophiliac, then? Someone who has sex with a dead person. I think I was right the first time. <laughs> I, I love you. Ellen, I said... I, I heard you. you. <clears throat> I love you. Sorry, love? Oh. I can't hear what you... Oh, I said I love you! You pinnock! Are you deaf? I think maybe we should, uh, maybe we should get some sleep. Looks like next door's had the same idea. Mm, either that or they're listening to us. Nosy bastards. Freaking hell, was that? Can you hear anything? Shh! Can you hear anything? Don't pass your bloody hacking on. Oh, what do you think's happened? Well, it's fairly bleeding obvious, isn't it? Yes. Well, he's killed her, isn't he? Don't be ridiculous. That Marcus is one hell of a temper, you heard it yourself. But they stopped rowing. Oh, well, that was probably his modus operandi, wasn't it, eh? Wait till she's asleep, vulnerable, defenceless. Then, smack! What? Over the head. Quick, swift, bit messy. You but... don't have to talk some rubbish. Marcus couldn't kill anyone. You never know. Oh, he's a gentleman, a gentle soul. He wouldn't hurt someone. He believes in talking, not fighting. Whatever the problem, whatever depraved acts of sluttishness Joyce has indulged in, whatever filthy, immoral, degrading, disrespecting, abhorrent behaviour she's done, Marcus is man enough to forgive her. He's quiet, thoughtful, insular. Ah, them's the ones you need to watch. You see him on the news. Starts with Maura Stewart saying, Neighbours describe Mr So-and-so as quiet and polite, and ends with her saying, before turning the gun on himself. <laughs> I don't know where you come up with this stuff. Picture it. He's just found out his wife's been having it away with someone else. He feels emasculine, impotent. He sees her lay there, the violated virgin, used goods. The red mist descends, and before he knows it, he's wrapping a limp body in a shower curtain, dumping her in the old disused quarry off Slater Lane, and then telling friends she's ran off with the milkman. Or something along those lines. You seem to have given it a lot of thought. I'm just thinking on my feet. Mm. Shh! I think I can hear him. What's he doing? I think. Yeah. What? He's laughing. Scout the bloody way he's not. And that's not laughing, that's... Oh, that's crying. Is it hell? That's laughing. His hands covered in her blood, smeared on his face, and as he laughs maniacally like a, like a big maniac. You, you're wrong. You... Oh, Marcus, what have you done? Oh, that's not laughing, that's sobbing. Oh, his toned body, stripped to the waist, cradling her limp body, her pert breast still glistening with sweat from the lovemaking. His fingers linger a fraction too long on her nipples. As... What have you been reading? What? Oh, mm, nothing. What do you think we should do? Go back to bed. Yeah, but what about what we heard? Well, what did we hear, Stephen? A yell and a bang. She was probably walking back from the bathroom in the dark, banged her foot on the bed. And knock the lamp off the bedside table. Ah, what kind of idiot would do that? <clears throat> I'll tell you what we heard. We heard Marcus lie in wait for when Joyce fell asleep. After a few minutes, he hears a gentle snores and sees his chance. He slips out of bed, tiptoes over to the bedside table, grabs the lamp and rips out of the plug. But the noise disturbs slumbering Joyce, who slowly opens her eyes to see her crazed husband stood over her, wielding the lamp. She barely has time to let out a pitiful scream before he brings it down onto her fragile skull, silencing the adulterous whore forever. Have you quite finished? But no. No, he's panicking. What does he do with the body? What does he do with the body? OK, Columbo. Time to call it a night. Story time's over. It's not that far-fetched, you know. People kill their spouses all the time. Well, oh, don't doubt that for a minute. I'm serious. Got it! Suitcases. He sticks her in a suitcase. That way can carry her body out in front of everyone. Bloke walking through a hotel reception with a suitcase, who's going to notice that? That's how I'd do it if I was going to kill my... Carry on. Well, I was just going to say that's how I'd do it if I was going to kill you. 
Thanks. Although, to be honest, there's no way I could get your body in a suitcase, because, well... Because what? Oh, because we only brought hand luggage. Good night, Stephen. But what about next door? Oh, I should never have listened to you in the first place. Killed her. Load of bloody nonsense. Idiot. Pfft. Half past twelve at night, you've got me reenacting rear sodding window. And turn that light out. You're not just going to go back to bed. I certainly am. What, what about Joyce? Who? Oh. Joyce is tucked up in bed getting a decent night's sleep. Lucky cow. I can't believe you. There's a dead woman on the other side of that wall and he's just going to lie there. If you're that concerned during reception, ask him to send someone up. I say what? Excuse me, monsieur, but I think the fellow in room 22 has caved his wife's head in. You just pop round and make sure. That should do it. I could phone the police, leave an anonymous tip off. Turn the light off. But... It's one o'clock in the morning, Stephen. I mean but... it. How many times, Stephen, the bloke next door has not killed his wife? You stupid bloody bitches heard you. It'll be after us next. Well, I didn't mean to raise my voice. You just get me so angry. And now it's cost us our lives. Shit. He's coming for us. Ring reception quick. Tell him to get security up here. I blame you for this. What have I done? And what do we do? I'm the man, Ellen. I- I'll handle this. If I don't... If I don't make it, Ellen... Oh, Stephen, no, don't go. I won't let you. Not before you tell me one thing. What is it? Where did you put the rust warranty for the dishwasher? Oh, it's in the old quality street, Tim, on top of the wardrobe. Farewell. Oh, Stephen. I'm ready for you. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. I don't, um, no tip, sorry. Oh, your sandwich is here. I'm not hungry. Well, phew, that, that could have been... Well, it, it could have oh, been... you. I'm, uh, I could have been... Absolute. ...going to death for, then for you. Hero! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, Ellen. Oh, Sam. Oh, Ellen. Oh, Ellen. Oh, 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 oh. That was A Breakaway by Andrew Turner, directed by Emma Jude Harris, featuring Zara Tompkinson as Helen, Dale Savage as Stephen. The couple next door were played by Pippa Beckwith and Ross Kinnerham. I will be honest, it was a little bit awkward recording this in the studio. I thought it was hilarious because the actors just jumped right into it. And, and because I basically had to be alone in the room with people making sex noises. And I just had to sit there very quietly and pretend that I'm listening to something completely different while... Yeah, it was it was quite awkward. It wasn't awkward for you because you weren't there, but I was. I mean, I was there for part of it, and it it's pretty difficult to maintain a straight face um, for some reason. But I was in the hallway as various bands who were in the other recording studios around us kept walking by, and that was genuinely entertaining. <laughs> We may or may not be banned from that studio, I'm unsure. Okay, and finally, we have Late Reunion by Aaron Leventhal. Weisberg? I'm not interested. No, this isn't a sales call. It's Rona, Jeff. Rona from Country Day High School in Albany. Don't you remember? Mm, I think so. Were you at the reunion last week? I wasn't sure if I missed you there. No, I wasn't. There was no one I wanted to see again. I I mean, except you, of course. But I assumed you wouldn't be there. Because everyone thought I was a freak except you. (laughs) Was that true? Pretty much. Even though you were the only person who was reasonably nice to me, I went anyway. Good for you. Actually, it sucked. No one even remembered me. They're probably all losers now anyway. Actually, they all have great jobs and families. You have any kids? No. You? No. Not really. I mean, no. I haven't found the right person to have them with yet. Well, these days that doesn't have to stop you. 
Whatever these days means. You still doing theater? You wanted to be an actor, right? <laughs> you remember that? I thought so for a while, but then reality set in. I work on Wall Street. So you sold out. That's cool. I've changed a lot since then, okay? No one even calls me Jeff anymore. It's Jeffrey. Anyway, how'd you get my number? The internet. You can find out almost anything from it these days, as you would say. Are you on Facebook? No. I don't have time for that kind of thing. Hmm. Well, I hope it's all right that I called. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just sort of in the middle of something here. Going out for the evening? <laughs> Not exactly. Oh. So are you at home, alone, on a Saturday night? Interesting. Right. Um, maybe I can give you a call another time. Actually, I'm coming to New, New York City soon, so I was hoping we could spend some time together. And I could stay with you for a few days? Uh, sure. I'll call you? That's sweet of you, Jeff. You always were considerate, but we're always so careful not to be too considerate. Actually, I should call you. It's sort of long distance. Where'd you live? Nebraska. <laughs> How'd you end there? It's a long story. I'll call you again sometime, okay? I guess... But will you pick up? You had sort of a history of dodging calls. I did? Are you sure that was me? Positive. Hello? Oh my god, Jeff, I'm so uh, sorry. Did I wake you? Yeah. It's four in the morning. Who is this? It's Rona, Jeff. It's Jeffrey, remember? Sorry, Jeff. Listen, I'll call back another time. I thought it was four in the afternoon. I, I was just kind of lonely, so I... I guess I can talk for a few... I only have to get up in two hours. You're a real sport. Didn't used to be, though. I could barely even get you to stay on the phone for five minutes, Jeff. It's... never mind. Did we used to go out or something? For like a millisecond. Did we ever... Nope. Came close once, though. I let you finger me in your car in the school parking lot. But that's as far as it got. I never knew why. You seeing anyone now? Not really. Just out of curiosity, what's the longest relationship you've ever been in? I don't know. Um, a few months, maybe? Just what I thought. Don't you have to get up for work tomorrow? Changing the subject. That's cool. My family's rich, so I don't have to work. Lucky you. So what do you do all day? Paint. Draw. Write poems. Play with myself. Nothing special. As long as you're happy, I guess. You happy getting up at six? It's not so bad. You have any friends down there? Yeah, I'm the toast of the town. I'm sorry? After all these years, I still haven't learned the basic art of small talk. You're doing fine just now. Listen, I should go back to sleep. I know. It's too bad I live all the way out here. Although, you are never too good at returning phone calls anyway. Well, I was a teenager. But people don't really change that much, right? Hello? Hi, Jeff. It's me again. Who's this? It's Rona. Who do you think? Oh, hey. What's up? Home alone again? Uh, no. I was having a party. How many people are there? I don't know. 20 or so. Is that a good turnout for you? I mean, how many didn't show? I don't know. The night's not over yet. Hey, you want to hear what you wrote me in our high school yearbook? Actually, um... <laughs> Dear Rona... I know that I haven't always been the best friend to you, but I hope that we can remain in touch forever. Listen, Rona, I was probably drunk when I wrote that. That's nice to know. You know, I went through a lot in therapy. I'm almost like a different person. You probably wouldn't even recognize me. Everyone's changed. That's the problem. 
You know, in college, I used to get invited to dinners, openings, you name it. I could walk down the street and run into, like, five people in one afternoon. Now I hardly know anyone. What happened, Jeff? Why did everyone drift apart? Maybe it's because you live in Alaska. It's Nebraska. No one in New York even knows I left. Actually, I know how you feel. You know you can call me any time. I don't have anything to do all day except pick lint out of my belly button. Why don't you get a job or something? There's nothing I know how to do. So, volunteer. Must be something you can do with your life. You should talk, Mr. Netflix. <laughs> Look, I never asked you to call me. I don't even remember who you are. So you lied to me. I felt sorry for you. I thought you remembered me. I thought you were my friend! Look, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean... Rona? Yeah, I, I need the number for a uh, Rona... I don't even know her last name. Um, what's the area code for Alaska? Hello? Hi. Jeff. It's me. Me meaning Rona. Hey, I, I tried to call you, but I didn't even know your last name. It's Elliot, Jeff. Rona Elliot. You never even asked me for my last name. I know. I'm sorry. Well, I'm on my way over. What's your address? What do you mean? To visit. I'm in New York. You said you wanted to hang out. <laughs> I did? So, it's all right if I stay with you for a night or two? Rona, I'm sorry, but I I'm just not into having company. Um, I shouldn't have said you could stay here. No, you shouldn't have. But it's all right. Can we at least get together for dinner? Sure. Great. I'll call you when I find a hotel. Okay. I can't wait to see you, Jeff. Goodbye. Changed one bit, Jeffrey. Bye bye, Jeff. Two thousand five, two thousand six, two thousand seven, George Washington High School. Hi, Veronica. It's me, Lena Lindquist from George Washington High School in New York City. Were you at the reunion last week? I wasn't sure if I missed you there. You see, I always remembered you, Veronica, because you were the only person who was nice to me. So that was Late Reunion by Aaron Levithman. Directed by Anisha Srinivasan, featuring Jessica O'Toole as Rona and Matt Penman as Jeffrey. Um, and yeah, this is a this is a scary little piece. Yeah, this is a nice. Um, it it one after I read it, I went home and I looked at my high school yearbook, and I got just a little creeped out looking at people again. <laughs> I've never had a high school yearbook, so I can't tell. Yeah, they're all right. Um, yeah, I think it's this, I, what I love about this piece is that it does play on this, this thing that I think we all do where we forget the people that we spent most of our childhood around. And it's very easy to sort of just reimagine the relationships that we might have had with them. So I, I mean, I, 
I can see this one happening, which I think makes it really fun. And there's <laughs> there's also an Easter egg to my, my alma mater in there, which I, I quite appreciate. So, that is us for this month. Yeah. I hope, and I hope you hope, um, hope. I hope, I hope. Good. That um, you enjoyed um, our offering this month. Next month, we will uh, have a few more pieces for you. Um, until then, um, thanks for listening and goodbye. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter, or you can check out our website, therighthourpodcast.com. Yay, hooray. Now, goodbye. Um, <laughs> and goodbye. Goodbye.